On this edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at the love of God on your face. They would approach me and say, man, you've changed. You don't look as serious as you used to look. You don't look as stern as you used to look. You look more joyful. You look more at peace. They could see it on my face. I knew who I was. There was a joy, a delight. I'm a child of the Father. I love this parable of the unprofitable servant. It's typical Jesus. The parable is shocking. Shocking and even disturbing. Isn't it a bit of a disturbing parable? I mean, the story of the servant, he works in the fields all day, and he comes in, and rather than sitting down and eating with his master, no, he goes and prepares the meal so that his master can eat, and then he eats later. And there's no thanks given to him. He's just doing his job. What an awful parable. What is Jesus thinking? Well, first, let's look at some of the interpretations. The first obvious interpretation is that as children of God, as uh, creatures created by God, we're always in debt to God, indebted to God. Like, we'll never be in a situation where God really owes us something. God has given us more than we could ever imagine. We could never, ever even dream of paying the Lord back. So much has He, has he given to us. And um, there's a beautiful song that kind of expresses this. Most of us are familiar with it. Um, the old hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Are you familiar with it? When I survey the wondrous cross on which... You know, you know that song? Anyways, there's a, there's a phrase or a, a verse. It says, Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were an offering far too small. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Even if I had the whole universe to give to God, even if I died a thousand deaths for God, it's nothing compared to His love for me and what He has given to me. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. And again, the saints, they understood this. They understood how God's love is so great, there's no way I could repay Him. I mean, how many of us in, our, in times of prayer where we really felt the grace, the love of God, we found ourselves saying that to the Lord. Lord, if only I could die a thousand deaths for you. You're so good. You're so loving. You're so great. And so again, in this parable, it's kind of a, uh, an image or a, a reminder that, yes, you know, God, He deserves so much from us. You know, we don't... We don't deserve any rewards from God. We can't earn anything from God. Now, does the Lord like to reward us anyways? Yes, He does. The Lord loves to reward us. Even though we don't really deserve any rewards, He loves to reward us. You've heard me share before when I was complaining to the Lord. I was saying, Lord, in Scripture, you keep talking about rewarding your servants and rewarding. And I said, Lord, I don't want any rewards. All I want is you. And remember what I said the Lord, I felt the Lord saying to me? I felt the Lord saying, because you don't want any rewards, you're going to get a reward for that. <laughs> because the Lord is the one who loves to give. He gives gifts. He loves giving gifts, even rewards, even though we don't deserve it. So that's kind of the, the initial, the, 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 the obvious interpretation of this parable. But then there's another less obvious interpretation. But an interpretation that is so typical, so like Jesus. We can look at this parable again, the parable of the servant works all day, prepares a meal for his master, uh, waits for his master to finish eating, then uh, eats himself. We can, we can ask ourselves, who is Jesus in this parable? Guess who Jesus is in this parable? It's the servant. Brothers and sisters, there's one thing we need to know about Jesus is He loves to serve. And that's an understatement. Jesus 
came to serve. He loves to serve. He's the servant. We hear in Isaiah chapter 52 and 53, the description of the suffering servant. And we have all this description of Jesus' kind of prophetic description of Jesus' passion and death, laying down his life for us like a lamb being led to the slaughter. And in 53 verse 11, the prophet says, the Lord says to the prophet, my servant, the just one, shall justify the many. Their iniquities he shall bear. Jesus is the servant. He's the suffering servant, and he's proud of it. Jesus takes great delight in serving. He loves to serve. It's kind of like, um, I don't know if any of you have heard of Rich Mullins. Rich Mullins was a great worship leader. Uh, he, he, he died a number of years ago. He wrote the song, among others, Awesome God, you know, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. Well, that's Rich Mullins. And he's written other beautiful songs. But anyways, Rich Mullins, he was a holy man. And he had a tremendous uh, or a great devotion to St. Francis of Assisi. He loved St. Francis of Assisi. And Rich Mullins, like St. Francis, he liked to be poor, you know. And there was, um, there was a, a big banquet for Christian worship artists uh, with, with an awards ceremony, and they were having it in a, in a nice hotel, and there was a nice meal served. And they say that Rich Mullins, because he didn't like to be served on, he didn't like riches and all that, he somehow managed to sneak his way into the serving table at the buffet. And he was serving the other worship artists, and he surprised some people, you know, like he. Rich Mullins was standing there and he says, would you like chicken or fish? And he said, I'll have the chicken. Wait, what, Rich, what are you doing here? And they say he, he would do that. Anytime he could, he'd try to sneak his way into a serving position, a simple lowly position. He loved to serve. And this is just like Jesus. Again, Jesus, he's the king of kings. He could have come to this earth and had a beautiful palace and a wonderful entourage and all that, those types of things. That's not what Jesus wanted. Jesus wanted to come and be among us, be with the poor. He wanted to, 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 to walk with us. He wanted to eat with us. He wanted to live with us. He wanted to share life with us. He wanted to serve us. So again, in this parable, Jesus is the servant. Now, who are we in this parable? We're the ones he's serving. We're the ones sitting at the table being served by the Lord. You see, Jesus came to serve us. We see this. We see this over and over again in Scripture. In Matthew uh, chapter 20, verse 26, Just so the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. That's why Jesus came, and boy, he did it well. He served well. In John's Gospel, uh, chapter 13, this is the, uh, the Last Supper, when Jesus washes his disciples' feet. He takes off his outer garment, he gets on his knees, he washes his disciples' feet. That was the job of a servant. And Jesus knew that, but he also knew he was the suffering servant who came to serve us. Jesus says to his disciples, Do you real realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If therefore the master and teacher have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow. And in Jesus' parables, he liked to talk about himself. Again, he's a little sneaky in that way. It's kind of like the parable of the Good Samaritan. You know, the guy who goes to Jericho, gets beat up, left for half dead. The priest and the Levite pass by him, but a Samaritan takes care of him. Jesus isn't the Samaritan taking care of him. Jesus is the guy who got beat up. Jesus is the one who tells us, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was naked and you clothed me. And so again, in this in this parable we see jesus who loves to serve who's the servant he's telling us i love to serve you and i want you to serve like i serve 
not looking for any reward, not looking for any recognition, serving simply because you love to serve. And we know again, Jesus, Jesus, he not only did this, Jesus not only served us, but he served us, as we hear in John chapter 13, verse 1, to the end. John chapter 13, verse 1, before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. Again, this, this suffering servant, not only is he serving kind of like a master who's not very grateful, Jesus came to serve people who would reject him and put him to death. And to, to serve these people, to love them to the end. That's what he came to do. That was his desire. That's what he loved to do, to serve to the end. And we, we need to do the same. Those of you who are husbands, you must serve and love your wife to the end in imitation of Christ. Those of you who are wives need to love, serve your husbands to the end in imitation of Christ. Those of us who are children, who have parents, we need to love, honor, serve our parents to the end because we're disciples of Christ. And to take great pride in serving. Do you take great pride in serving your parents? Or do you do it begrudgingly? Or serving your wife or serving whoever else? You know, like if you see, if you, you children, you young people, if you see your dad, you know, kind of late at night realizing, oh, I got to put the garbage out, it's garbage day tomorrow, you say, hey, hey, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Hey, sit down. I'll take care of that. You and I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to take care of that. To take great pride in serving your father. And same thing, your mother, you know, you see your mother kind of working away at something. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? You sit down. I'm here to serve you. You know, some people have a backwards. Some people think mothers are there to serve. Mothers are not there to serve. They're there to be served. If you're, if you're, if you're living in a house and there's a mother, you serve her. Can the ladies say amen? amen? What about the men? Can the men say amen? amen. The, the mothers are in the home. They're there to be served. Some people think mothers are just there to be served. That's not true. They're there to, to serve. We serve our mothers. We will continue with the teaching by Father Mark in just a moment. The Food for Life ministry is only made possible by the financial donations from you, our viewers. We ask that after the program, you prayerfully consider a tax-deductible financial donation to help us continue this Catholic television ministry. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. Thank you for your prayers and support. And now back to Father Mark Goring. And again, Jesus, Jesus is the example of this. He came to serve. He loved to serve. He served till the end. He took great pride in serving us. You see, brothers and sisters, we as human beings, as children of God, as human beings endowed with an immortal soul, we too were made to serve. It's good to know how we were made. We know that everything in creation is interdependent. You know, everything in creation depends on everything else in creation. You know, like the little butterflies flying around, we need those butterflies. Somehow those butterflies keep the whole of creation in sync. Everything is interdependent. Everything serves a purpose and a function. And we too, as, as human beings, we are meant to, to have a function, to have a purpose, to serve. And because we were made to serve, we will only be happy if we are serving, if we're fulfilling our function. Again, for some of us, this is like a Copernican revolution, you know, a, a, a paradigm shift. Oftentimes we think, hey, if I want to be happy, I need to be served. I need to be pampered. I need people to take care of me. That's not true. If you want to be happy, you need to serve others. And you'll find happiness. I know a Catholic a psychologist. He's either a psychologist or a psychiatrist. 
or maybe he's a psychotherapist. I always get them mixed up, you know. Anyway, one of those three. And again, in helping people, in particular people struggling with depression, he insists, hey, serve people. Go work at a soup kitchen. Do, do something. Find some way of making of yourself a gift to others, and you will be able to, you know, lift yourself out of this depression so much easier. Again, we were made to serve. When we serve, we find life. And then each, each one of us is called to serve in a unique way. You know, one of the things we need to, to kind of discover in our life is, Lord, how have you called me to serve? You know, what is my particular way to serve? When Jesus came to walk the face of the earth, he served us in a very specific way. He took upon himself the sins of the whole world, put them to death by dying on the cross, rose again, opening the gates of heaven for us. That's, that's the specific way he came to serve. He didn't come to write a big encyclopedia with all the knowledge in the world. He didn't come to explore the world and make the maps of the world. He didn't come to find a cure for all the diseases. He could have done all those things, but that wasn't why he came. He came to lay his life down and die for us. And so too, each one of us, we need to discover, Lord, how did you call me to serve? How was I created to serve? And I'll tell you something, to find what it is that the Lord has called us to, how we're called to serve, it's like finding a treasure. It's like finding a treasure because in that we'll find happiness and fulfillment. And so too, again, each one of us, Lord, how are you calling me to serve? To find that is to find a treasure because when we find that, we find a secret to happiness in our lives. And again, each one of us, it's in a unique way. For some of us, it's working with the poor. For some of us, it's working with children. For some of us, it's working with the sick. For some of us, it's working with the elderly and shut-ins. For some of us, it's, it's working with, with drug addicts. For some of us, it's working with, with women, uh, single women who are in difficult situations. There, there's, there, for some of us, it's serving specifically in the church in, in different capacities. There's just so many ways we can serve. Have you discovered the way the Lord has called you to serve? If you haven't, beg God, God, show me this treasure in my life. Show me how I'm called to serve. To find that is to find a treasure. Now, serving is extremely important, but there's something we always need to remember, and then that, that is that our, our identity goes much deeper than our service. You know, the Lord doesn't love me because I'm, you know, trying to do a good job being a priest. The Lord loves me because I'm his son. I'm his child. He made me. That's why he loves me. His love for me is not dependent. It's not, um, what's the word they, uh, they always use? It's not conditional. God's love is not conditional. And that's why when Jesus began his public ministry, be before Jesus began doing all the great signs and wonders, before he began uh, preaching and, and, and calling to repentance, and we see in Matthew chapter 3, verse 17, God the Father told something to Jesus that was vital, extremely important. He said, when this is at the baptism of the Jordan, and a voice came from the heavens saying, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Again, our identity ultimately does not come from what we do. It comes from who we are. And Jesus had this security he, in his identity. He knew who he was. Do you have the same security? Do you, do you know who you are? The Lord wants us to know our identity. This is, this is fundamental. If we serve out of an idea that by serving, I'm earning God's love, we're missing the boat. And oftentimes when we try to serve the Lord in this way, He makes things difficult for us. Because he insists, I want you to know that I love you just for who you are, not for what you do. And so I remember, I remember when I was in the seminary, um, I, I had this mentality, you know, I'm going to be uh, a priest and I'm going to, to just be the best priest I can be and this is going to make God very happy. And it's funny because towards the end of seminary, um, we had these teachings on the Father's love and there was other things going on in my life. And I came to this realization that God loved me no matter what I did, simply because I was His Son. His love for me was not conditional. And this, this transformed me. 
And it transformed me so much that people started to approach me in the parish where I was living and serving as a seminarian. They would approach me and say, man, you've changed. You don't look as serious as you used to look. You don't look as stern as you used to look. You look more joyful. You look more at peace. They could see it on my face. I knew who I was. There was a joy, a delight. I'm a child of the Father. Even if I sleep in every morning for the rest of my life and, you know, whatever else, you know, no matter, you know, no matter what I do, His love will never stop for me. Now, obviously, He calls us to, to, to serve, and, and, and he, he wants us to do that because uh, if we don't, we won't be happy. But again, His love is not dependent. One last basic principle about serving is that to serve, those who serve will reign. Some people think, oh, what a boring life, you know, why would I want to spend my life serving? I want to spend my life serving myself, you know, making, you know, making a name for myself or all this kind of thing. Basic principle, the one who serves will reign. We see this in a number of places, for example, in Luke chapter 19, verse 17, this parable of the talents and the, the person who earned additional, 10 additional ones, the, the, the king says, Well done, good servant. You have been faithful in this very small matter. Take charge of ten cities. Again, those who serve in this life will reign in the next life. The Lord assures us of that. And even in this life, in many ways, you know, would, uh, they say to serve is to reign. And so again, brothers and sisters, Jesus is our model. Jesus shows us the way to life, to happiness. He calls us to serve. And if it's good enough for Him, it's got to be good enough for us. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on The Love of God on Your Face, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on The Love of God on Your Face. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at sanctity. For we, for us as Christians, every day is supposed to be a Sunday. S-O-N-D-A-Y. Amen? Every day is supposed to be a Sunday, a day of rest, because we're with the Lord and the Lord promises us rest. So if life was a harbor, who would you be? Or who do you aspire to be? Do you aspire to be that great yacht with the huge sail, majestic, rich, and regal, riding the seas and the winds of change, even leveraging them and optimizing them? Or are you lower profile? You're, you're the rowboat or the canoe still having to, to fight the seas and the winds of change, but really on your own steam? Or are you the tugboat? Are you that little boat that has great power that often has to go against the, we, the winds and the seas of change? Maybe even called upon to, to rescue the yacht or to rescue the rowboat. Your low profile but you're steady, you're sure, you're faithful. Not too glamorous. When people go into the harbor, you're not noticed until crisis hits. When tough things happen, when people are in tough situations, 
The tugboat is there to rescue. So what would the Lord have us be in this, in this little metaphor? I think the Lord would want us to be a tugboat. Would want us to be faithful. Would want us to be consistent and robust and true. To be in a place of modesty. To be very happy to help and serve and to rescue those who maybe are driven by the winds of change and the winds of this world. And maybe those who really, you know, maybe aren't not necessarily trying to leverage it, but are trying to fight the winds of change and the seas on their own strength. So I don't know about you, but I want to be the tugboat. Those famous words from Mother Teresa who said, you know, it's not about being successful, but it's about being faithful. That's where I want to be. So let's pray. Father, we, we thank you for the, for the great calling on our lives. Lord, we thank you that you've called us to, to walk in your footsteps. That as glorious and magnificent as you are, you came as a man to be faithful. To be low profile, to even come and to even be despised. But you came to rescue, Lord. You came to rescue us. So, Lord, we want to follow after you. We want to put our vanity aside. We don't want to be drawn in by the secular winds and seas of change. We want to be driven by you and your Holy Spirit. So, Father, we ask by the, by the power of your Holy Spirit that we would be faithful to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. Thank you again for your support of this Catholic television ministry. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1639 and today's topic, Father Mark Goring on Love of God on Your Face. Food for Life is a nonprofit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. To help us continue this Catholic television ministry, please send your tax deductible donation to Food for Life. Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. If every viewer gave a loony or a toonie each week, all expenses would be met. If you have never donated before, we ask that you make your check payable to Food for Life. And our address is Food for Life. Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. Thanks to your faithful prayers and tax-deductible financial support, Food for Life is the longest-running Catholic television program in Canada. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at Sanctity. For we, for us as Christians, every day is supposed to be a Sunday. S-O-N-D-A-Y. Amen? Every day is supposed to be a Sunday, a day of rest, because we're with the Lord and the Lord promises us rest. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on the love of God on your face, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on the love of God on your face.